have to do with Lucis. Uh, I'm studying at Gas Business School, I'm a student, and I will be translating Mr. Kazakis' uh, speech. Uh, before everything, I would like to introduce uh, the subject uh, by uh, introducing the speakers themselves. Initially, we have Mr. Dimitris uh, Kazakis, uh, who's an economist and financial analyst from Greece. Uh, can everyone? Um, so he has worked for numerous companies in Greece and abroad. Uh, he is actually writing articles for a well-known newspaper in Greece. Uh, he's uh, the General Secretary of the United People's Front, EPAM, and he will be analyzing and discussing the issue of the Greek crisis, the debt, and his own opinion about the solution uh, that he is suggesting as the General Secretary of uh, the United People's Front. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for the invitation and specifically the university. Right from the beginning, we need to clarify that the crisis which Greece is currently facing and has led the country to its fifth official bankruptcy does not originate from the actions of a political government or from the effects of a fiscal problem which could be solved through the implementation of measures of readjustment and reductions in government expenditure. Greece has bankrupt due, due to the national uh, due to the national debt as a result of the bankruptcy of its own economy, which for the past decades has been suffering from the implementation of a model based on which an economy should grow through concentrating on being extrovert, and as it follows, that economy should obey the decisions made by the international financial and capital markets. <coughs> In terms of the previous decades in Greece, it should be stated that as long as the international dogma of free markets and deregulation was applied, the Greek economy was becoming a parasitic economy which concentrated on providing cheap services. As a result, Greece depended even more on the fluctuations of international financial markets and kept losing ground in terms of its international competitiveness. This result was expected as the Greek economy was formed around the basic principle that it should be serving the most illegal and extraordinary appetites for high returns and profitability as, de as demanded from both external and internal investors. A very characteristic statistic related to the previous statements is that the percentage of the private returns in terms of the total added value within the local economy during these years of the recession reached 59% in 2009. This is a record figure within the European Union as it is almost double in comparison to the weighted average figure which corresponds to the rest of the EU members. For decades, all the, govern all the governing parties in Greece and their so-called protectors from abroad, such as the OECD, the IMF and the EU, did everything that could be done under their own power in order to convert in order to convert Greece into a primary, in order to convert it to a primary competitive advantage of the Greek economy, the prospect of maximization of the private sector's profits beyond any logical and reasonable limits, which could be set by the economy itself due to its capabilities in terms of productivity. Due to all of the above, the country's productivity started to sink, and that element of, par of parasitism would be transmitted to all business sectors. While, on, while at the same time the quackery of the issue and selling of financial derivatives was advocated as a solution. A characteristic statistic indicating this is the fact that in 1992, for every $100 of foreign private capital which was invested in the local economy, a 59% was associated with investments in the real economy, 31% was associated with real estate, and just 10% was associated with financial investments. In 1994, the figures were 33% towards the real economy, 7% towards real estate, and 60% towards financial assets. Just before the outbreak of the crisis, the figures were 10% for the real economy, 1% towards the real estate investments, and 89% towards financial investments. The result was that figure corresponding to 63% of the total private profit generated from the economy during the last 10 years was interest. All of the above led to the creation of an economy similar to an existent El Dorado for anyone who wanted to sell derivatives and speculate both from Greece and from abroad. 
On the other hand, the government would either act as if none of this existed, or even worse, would itself participate in this game, which had as its ultimate goal to squander public wealth in favor of a specific financial and political oligarchy, which with the support from speculators from the US and the, U and, and the EU, did all that it could be done under their powers in order to attack the Greek society's ethics and instruct the Greek people that it is normal to borrow, request subsidies, and depend on special political favors in order to survive. The result was that the result was that the national debt faced an incredible increase as the state had to undertake debts in order to be transformed into a pawn. Its political leaders were corrupted as they sold themselves for powerful financial centers. In return, they had to promote the plundering of the country's wealth by any means available and leave the country unprotected and exposed to any extreme practice of private speculation. At the same time, as soon as the production deficit of the Greek economy increased, so did private and public borrowing. The situation, this situation attracted the interest of officials from the Eurozone, and especially from Germany. Greece did not join the Eurozone by mistake, nor is it true that Greece was not ready to join the Euro. This was exactly the situation which was the prerequisite for Greece to join the Eurozone. Greece had to have deficits and debts, which would allow the existence of the potential for further opportunities, uh, for further opportunities for profiting for the European banks and the countries which had exporting economies, and primarily Germany. The latter had transformed Greece into a garbage can to which, uh, through dumping, exported goods, requesting in return the provisions of new loans. Greece ended up to be totally dependent on the provision of new loans, which acquired from the Eurozone's own capital market. On December 31st, 2001, the Greek debt was 146 billion euros. On January 1st, 2002, Greece has joined the euro, and up until the 31st of December 2009, its national debt increased by 152 billion euros. In other words, within seven years, Greece's national debt had more than doubled. This situation is unprecedented, as in 2009, the state's income was roughly 45 billion euros, and its imports were 15 billion euros, while the income generated from services was almost 27 billion euros. At the same time, interest and coupons, which had to be repaid, were 109 billion euros. Under these conditions, Greece was facing a de facto bankruptcy, bankruptcy, irrespectively of whether the country could secure any new loans or not. Financial markets were closed for Greece since January 2009, and due to this situation, the Eurozone had to intervene in fear of any implications to the currency itself due to Greece's inability to repay its debt. In direct collaboration with both PASOK and New Democracy, EU officials manipulated the political transition in Greece in order to promote the formation of a new government with sufficient parliamentary majority, which would be in a position to guarantee that Greece would undergo severe liquidation in favor of its creditors, just like a business or a company which has declared bankruptcy. The politicians in Greece, along with the oligarchy, which rules the country for decades, in order to escape the wrath of the Greek people, agreed to the general disposal of the country under a colonialist regime in exchange for a small share of the spoils which the European lenders would reap. So, they agreed to put Greece and the Greek people under colonial guardianship and essentially under occupation, having as their main goal the general disposal of the whole country. Thanks to a sequence of memoranda and loan agreements, Greece is practically ruled by foreign commissioners. It is well known that all the laws passed and the policies implemented in the country are not even drafted by officials and ministries, but instead they are drafted by European commissioners. <coughs> ministers sign them without any objection and then address them to the parliament for approval. The Greek state has been completely nullified. The government is a mere storefront of foreign powers and conquerors. The results of the policies based on the memoranda were from the beginning disastrous for the country. For the country.
from, two, from 298 billion euros in debt in 2009, or 127% of GDP, the debt increased to 328 billion euros in 2010, or 143% in terms of GDP. While in 2011, the debt reached an amount of nearly 369 billion euros, 71 billion euros more debt in two years, or at 178% of GDP. At the same time, the recession of the Greek economy escalated to unprecedented levels and unemployment, along with mass poverty, continued to increase, while incomes were reduced by 15% as expressed at constant prices. After the first disastrous invasion of the Troika in Greece, it was decided during the second half of 2011 that without a restructuring of the debt throughout a haircut of around 56%, it would not be feasible to deal with the continuous and rapid <coughs> increase of the debt. The debt restructuring took place in March 2012, but the benefits promised to the bankers involved were such that instead of reducing the debt, the debt was eventually increased by 3 to 5 billion euros. So while the restructuring through the haircut reduced the nominal value of the debt by 106 billion euros, Greece was forced to borrow again another 109 billion in order to be in a position to carry out the so-called PSI. This, result, this, this resulted in an increase in debt instead of a decrease. Additionally, the debt restructuring caused the bankruptcy of the insurance, fund, of the insurance funds and the funds of stakeholders in the so-called wider public sector, which includes institution, institutions such as chambers of commerce, scientific associations, universities, hospitals, organizations, and many more. At the, same, at the same time, it should be mentioned that common people who had invested their savings in bonds issued by the Greek government were seriously affected as well. In order not to become apparent to the Greek people, the fraud of the PSI, the Eurogroup decided to proceed to a Greek bond buyback from the secondary market in November 2012. The buyback had as its main goal to reduce the Greek debt by 30 billion with a cost of 11.7 billion, which would have been paid by the EFSF. The Greek government is required to pay 11.7 billion within the next two months, an amount which it does not have. It is, it is easy for one to picture Greece's collapse if all this, if all this, if, if all this is combined with a continuous collapse of the financial aspect of the government due to the fact that the Greek population fails to meet, fails to meet its tax obligations, the recession which is more than 7% per year, the official unemployment which, is, which exceeds 27%, the investments which have fallen below 14% of GDP, the fact that this is the first time in the post-war history of Greece that the disposable income of the population continues to collapse, and is far below the minimum level which is required so that a person can survive, and the fact that the private debt continues on its increasing trend. This collapse is fraudulent and deliberate, and aims to sell out the country at rock bottom prices. The country is said to be sold out not only in terms of its publicly owned property through privatization and concessions, through, through privatization and concessions, and concessions but in terms of the private property of the Greek society as well, which today is mortgaged not only to banks, but also to the state itself, due to the outstanding financial obligations of the vast majority of the people, due to their failure to meet their own tax obligations. The tragedy is that the Troika is applying more and more pressure, insisting on the disastrous downhill, and the leaders of this country have surrounded, have surrendered in advance and without a fight. For the Euros and the Eurozone's sake, we are in danger of destroying an entire country and eradicating an entire nation. For us, the dilemma is crystal clear. One either compromises with the status quo and simply vindicates ways in order to manage the current situation in the most effective way, or attempts to overthrow this financial regime. In such cases, there is no middle way. If our country insists on waiting for a due for, for a deuce 
ex machina, to save us, to save us uh, through some sort of a miracle, we will experience an absolute disaster. A realistic proposal is the one which does not expose the people and the country in any threats and does not allow anyone to sink in despair and hopelessness. If this nation makes the decision to overthrow this financial regime, the recovery will be very fast and the working classes will sense the difference from the first day. What should be done though? First, we need to stop the demand on loans given to our country from the Eurozone, which have as their main clause the destruction and selling off of the country. We must deny the repayment of the debt, and this should be accompanied by, repu by a repudiation of the debt, which should be characterized as illegal and abusive under the rules of international law. Second, we need to declare the withdrawal of Greece from both the Euro and the Eurozone and, and, and the EU in order to introduce a national currency to our economy and regain the ability and the freedom to restructure our economy based on our own criteria and the interests of the Greek people, disregarding the European banking oligarchy. After that, we will need six, six to eight months in order to introduce the new national currency. Within this period, some direct measures should be implemented. Number one, the nationalization of the Bank of Greece and the major private banks which have attracted most liquidity from the Euro system. Why is that? In order to let the banking system go bankrupt while at the same time we're in a position to guarantee for the people's deposits. The default will enable the banks to, to, to be able to, rebuild from, to be rebuilt from scratch without any obligations to external investors, while at the same time the banks could, could proceed to the deletion of debts associated with households and small businesses. Second, the recovery of losses in income from which employees and the retired population suffered right from the beginning of the implementation of the memorandum. Salaries and pensions should be brought back to the levels on which they were prior to, 5th, to the 5th of May 2010. This would be achieved through the use of electronic scriptural money, script, scriptural money provided by the banks which are under public control, while these banks would provide small businesses with operating loans. Third, the imposition of capital control. In this way, we will stop the bleeding which tyrannizes the Greek economy and deprives it from huge funds from within of nationalized banks, the so-called black money market, for which the Greek banking system is famous internationally, will come to an end. Controlling the movement of capital is easy once one assumes control of the banking system, and in our case, this capital control will be associated with selective taxation of capital, which, moving, which is moving from the economy abroad or comes to the economy from abroad from abroad. Untaxed profits, dividends, interest payments, and investments in securities abroad will come to an end as well. Also, on funds from abroad which are destined to speculate in real estate and financial assets will be imposed dissuasive high taxation, while those funds which are directed towards investments in the real economy must be treated favorably given that they satisfy the government in terms of the provision of new vacancies for employment, which will be relatively secure. They will, which they will be relatively secure. They will be wage inelastic, investing in new technology, and value-adding production. Fourth, explicit abolition of layoffs and abolition of the use of bankruptcy in the private sector. In the case where we are dealing with a small business, a freelancer, or an individual producer, the state will guarantee that they do not bankrupt through the provision of direct support or subsidized loans. In the case of large corporations and especially multinational companies, workers will be given the opportunity to manage the businesses with the state's support. At the same time, inelastic labor rights will be imposed in order to deal with unemployment, and especially unemployment associated with young people. Fifth, direct intervention, inter intervention in the country's external balance of goods and services. 
until the Greek economy is normalized and its production capabilities are set to be taken advantage of, imported goods would be substituted by domestically produced goods, and the state will ensure to significantly reduce those imported goods which are not absolutely necessary for the prosperity of the domestic economy and the needs of its society. The government will also have to impose a selective protectionism based on which products will not be will not be before uh, what will not be uh, imported before domestically produced products are exhausted and in the case that they are that, that those products imported should be at least uh, and the case that uh, products are imported those products should be at least of the same quality and production value with the corresponding domestically produced products only under such conditions a less powerful economy may compete on equal terms Sixth, our main concern during this period would be to maintain the circulation of paper money within the Greek economy, which according to the current data amounts to 26 billion euros. For this, we will implement capital control, which would prohibit the export of paper money and would impose a very high tax to capital, to capital which is about to be exported and invested in equities and bonds abroad. At the same time, we would also allow the influx of paper money from abroad, which will be checked in, which would be checked in terms of where it is placed within the Greek economy, in order to prevent any form of speculation. Deposits in domestic banks will not be restricted in any way, but the introduction of the national currency, no one would be able to withdraw physical money. All transactions within the economy would be made through the use of deposit accounts to which access will be gained through the use of debit cards like ATM cards. And this is how the use of physical money would be substituted. This measure is necessary as the government would need to withdraw all euro banknotes which are estimated to be around 10 billion euros so that they could be used as a reserve currency of the nationalized bank of Greece. Through the use of this reserve, we would be able to cover up the current external deficit of goods and services. We should, keep, we should also keep in mind that banks would have neither the character of the current form. The they, of, course they keep, uh, of course, the key to all of this is the quick restart of the Greek economy in terms of its productivity and investments in the real economy. This may be achieved through the provision of open credit available to those who want to invest in production-related businesses and have as their, main, as their main goal the addition of value to the process and the provision of secure employment and an extensive program of public investment in, infra in, in, in infrastructure free from corruption. All of the above will give a sharp upward momentum in the economy such that when the currency is finally introduced, its exchange rate will be stabilized with little turbulence. Of course, all of this cannot be done if the Greek people does not manage to bring back democracy to its country, and if they do not get rid of the completely co corrupt political system which brought this nation to this misery and delivered him as a prisoner to financial markets. The Greek people should bring back this kind of democracy, which has as its main prerequisite national independence and sovereignty of the people who should be ruling their own countries and not become slaves to their lenders and their corrupt politicians. Thank you very much.